You ready, Cam? I'll call this um, April 13th Town Council meeting to order and thank you all you for being here tonight and for everyone who is logged in online, live streaming. We will um, have our invocation and our Pledge of Allegiance, if you'll stand. Dear Father, we just praise your holy name and we thank you for your many blessings. Father, we thank you for the safety that you gave our citizens and our firefighters last week during the terrible fire that hit our community. We pray that you will continue to bless our citizens and our town and that the decisions made here tonight will be in accordance with your holy will. In your name we pray, amen. amen. And uh, as a, a note to that, uh, Chief uh, Griffin, I see you there. I just want to commend you and uh, your firefighters and our uh, police department and everyone who participated in um, the safety of our citizens last week. So thank you so much for a great job. Well done again. Thank you. <laughs> we are very fortunate to have you guys and ladies watching out for us. So uh, we'll move into, um, I'll make a motion to, if there's no questions about the consent agenda, is there any questions? No, but really quick, I would say all first responders from both communities, it was a good team up, really appreciate what all you guys do. Thank you, Joe Dan. So if there's no questions, I'll make a motion to adopt the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we'll move into our special presentations. And our very first special presentation is Girl Scout Troop 4785. We are going to talk about signage to the Island Greenway. Ladies, you want come on up here. Welcome and good evening. Hi. Hi. Uh, we want to thank Town Council Member Mayor Pierce, Mr. Healy, Mr. Shuttleworth, Mr. Garza, and Mr. Barbie for allowing Troop 4785 to propose our Bronze Award project for Girl Scouts. Uh, Girl Scouts have a bronze, silver, and gold awards. A bronze award involves seven steps, should roughly take 20 hours, inclusive research planning to be at the end of fifth grade, but due to COVID-19, it has been uh, added on more time for us to do it. Um, our girls are 10, 11 years old and the time has come for them to start making a difference in the community and to start being involved and take action. We have nine fifth grade girls who are excited to get started on this project. We have taken time to explore the Carolina Beach community. We have gone to all the um, other Greenway like walks and everything. We realized that only one of them, the East Coast Greenway is the only one that doesn't have um, the mile markers that all the other ones have, and that is the largest one, but the only one that doesn't have it. We are proposing to create a total six quarter mile marker post to cover 1.2 mile section of this particular trail. Some questions that commonly came up when we were discussing this project is why would we pick this project? And we feel now more than ever people are motivated by the exercise, the fresh air, and all the positive benefits that you get from increased activity, such as better mood, more socialization, a time for self-reflection, and accountability to walk, run, run, and ride for yourself with your family and pets. If the longest stretch of the trail in Carolina Beach is marked, we believe it will positively push the people of our town to set goals to go further and assist with either becoming or helping to maintain a more healthy version of themselves. We are convinced that this is a realistic goal that will help us achieve the, our bronze award, which will have a lasting impact on our community. Another common question was, how will we finance this project? The biggest fundraising Girl Scout, the biggest fundraiser the Girl Scouts have is the Girl Scout Cookie Program. We will use a portion from our cookie sales from last year and this year to fund this year's project. 
If needed, we will also hold an additional fundraising activity to ensure that neither the troop nor the town of North Carolina would be required to pay for this project. We will also have it completed before the end of May 2021. This is awesome. I just want to say thank you. You ladies are doing an amazing <laughs> job. Thank you. Just made my day. I'm smiling awesome. This is great. <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. How will we put our plan into motion? We will work as a Girl Scout troop with the representatives of the North Carol of the Carolina Beach and all the committees between GS Troop 4785 and the Army Crop of Engineers to have this project approved. Once approved, we will continue to work with the committee of the town of Carolina Beach to ensure that the posts are consistent and uniform with the other <coughs> signatures <coughs> that are already present, such as size, type, color, along with the other island greenways section. We'll, we will use a distance wheel to accurately mark the start and each quarter mile these locations are approximately close to the entrance near Michael J Michael Chapel Park on South 8th Street, Greensboro, Greenfield Avenue, and the straightway near the lake between the bridge and the bench, North Carolina Avenue and South Carolina Avenue, Avenue on both sides. The quarter mile indicators will be posted on the north and south sides of the post so that they will be visible to the community regardless which direction they travel on the trail. Should the trail be approved at a later date to extend further into Fury Beach, the markers we would use would likely be bolted in the post, to the post, meaning it wouldn't be cumbersome to rearrange, replace, and add new posts to continue the trip distance in the future without weight of the sign. We will work with the town of we will work with the town of Carolina Beach to identify the vendors to price the quarter mile markers per that look professional. We would also like to place a very small plate at the bottom of one side of each post to state something along the lines of Girl Scout Troop 4785, Bronze Project, year 2021. This is a map of all the trails in Carolina Beach. All trails have distance, distances labeled from most, most from start to finish. We noticed the section from Mike Chapel Park to Curry Beach of the Greenway was not marked. This, is, this trail is called the Island Greenway. The Island Greenway is currently the largest continuous trail. We feel this trail should be marked in quarter mile markers. The Snow's Cut Trail is <laughs> half a mile long. So the first picture with the two signs on top of each other is where it starts. And then the one right next to it is where it ends. And then the big map of Carolina Beach is where is, <laughs> is some more trails in Carolina Beach. Um, the State Park Trail is 0 0.75 miles long. Right there, the big sign that says State Park Trail is the beginning, and then the other one is towards Dog Road, and then the last one is towards the beach. The exercise loop. Carolina Beach State Park Fitness Trail exercise loop is one mile long. The trail has a quarter mile marker throughout and is the second longest section of the island greenway system. These pictures clearly show how we can replicate, replicate visible and professionally quarter mile markers for the island greenway section that would 
be clearly seen from either direction where you are traveling on the trip. The Carolina Beach Lake section is 0.67 miles long. There is a main map showing all greenway sections throughout the town of Carolina Beach at this location. This covered structure and bike repair station was created recently as, an e as a part of an Eagle Scout award project. So the Eagle Scouts have had their little mark in, um, in our uh, town. So we would like to, as Girl Scouts, to, put, to have input on our town. Uh, so the Island Greenway Trail is 1.2 miles long and extends from Mike Chapel Park off of South 8th Avenue in Carolina Beach to Alabama, Alabama Avenue in Cary Beach. The stars are the spots where we'd like to place our mile markers. As you can see up there, there are the maps and this is showing the area which we would like to put our markers on the trail. So we thank you for your time and appreciate you listening to us and we look forward to your response. Well, well ladies, I have to say in my eight, nine years on council, that is one of the most well put together presentations I have ever seen. <laughs> And uh, you managed to get yourself on the agenda, and you made a great presentation, and I think it's a wonderful idea. Gentlemen, do you have any uh, questions for these ladies? The first thing is, A, that was amazing, and B, can we have your names, please? Yeah. I'm Emily. Thank you, Emily. Sadie. Thank you, Sadie. My name's Grace. Thanks, Grace. I'm Haley. Thanks, Haley. And I'm Kylie. Thanks, Kylie. Uh, I think your presentation, uh, number one, I think if possible, you should ask the town for a copy of that video. Because mm -hmm. if this was me, I'd want this for other troops to see because uh -huh. this shows your impact. Of, a, your passion that you were able to come up here and do that. It's awesome. Yeah. And B, it's, I think it's a helpful tool that what you're doing right now. Mm -hmm. for, if you kept that video, mm -hmm. it's, I'd put it on the website yeah. for that company. <laughs> Extremely impressive thank presentation. You. It really was. So thank, thank you so much for that. I feel, I really feel bad for the people that have to follow you. <laughs> <laughs> presentation was. <laughs> and I guess my second question is, is that, you know, did you bring any cookies at all? <laughs> yeah, I really don't Great have job. a lot to add. Fantastic job, I ladies. Um, I, I agree with what Jay said. I think the rest of the meeting is going to go down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, folks. But good job. <laughs> Excellent job. Uh, Bruce, do we have a staff liaison for these ladies? Um, no, I don't know who's been looking at her hair. Okay. Well, and I was going to say I was quite impressed that they included Matsu. We, sh we should uh, send them to do some of our other bidding with Matsu, <laughs> I think. They're, they're quite impressive. You're hired. I would put that video in the email. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that's a great idea. Um, so you need a, a vote from us? Yeah. Okay. They also did this presentation and you're going to learn so much. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed, and I know this project is going to do well. But So I will make a motion. Any volunteers, let me know. I thought that was cool as hell. Yeah, that was, <laughs> uh, that was awesome. I'll make a motion to approve the request by Girl Scout Troop 4. 785 to add signage to the Island Greenway. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ladies, um, our town manager will find someone from staff to walk you through some of the things you may have some issues with. And I'm so excited to see this. And yeah. when you're done, we'd like you to come back and um, present to us when it's finished. And um, that way we can take a look at it, maybe meet you out there. That'd be great. Thank Very you, good. Ladies. Thank you. Good awesome. job. All right, serious about the video. <laughs> Every time I start to doubt something, I see these young kids come up with these wonderful uh, initiatives and, and just so well thought out. I think our future is, uh, looks pretty bright. Yeah, that, was, that, was, that was great. I'm serious Kim? about the video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think Matsu could tell them, though. No. 
right, Tim, you're going to have Who to really Who put me up. on the agenda after Uh-oh. that? <laughs> it was Happy awesome. Tuesday. Thank you guys so much. Uh, let's see. Okay. Special events for April and May. Starting with a uh, fourth annual Surf Dog Experience, which is Saturday, May 8th at the North End Pier. Followed by the same day, later in the day, uh, CB Street Arts Festival will be held at the Carolina Beach Lake, uh, Saturday, May the 8th. And we have the Tinted Turtle Trot, uh, Sunday, May 16th at Mike Chapel Park. That's a fundraiser for my kid's school, Island Montessori. We do have two new event requests that we're looking for council action. Um, the first one will be from Island Women with Carrie Jones to present. Good evening. Hi, how are you? Good evening, I'm Mary Pearson, Town Hi. Council. Thank you so much for granting us this opportunity to speak to you tonight. I can tell you I need to step up my game. Cause <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is good, but it's not that good. So anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Carrie Jones, and I'm here representing the Island Women. Along with me this evening is Kay Rakowski. She's our current Island Women president. And Kathy Murray is our president-elect. And we are here to talk to you about a new fundraising initiative that we'd like to try to do at the end of the summer called Lowe's Food Truck Rodeo, uh, name subject to change. But we'd like to do this event on Sunday, um, Oct uh, August 29th from 12 to 5 p.m at the Carolina Beach Lake. If you, oh, sorry, if you don't know that much about us, we are a non, local nonprofit. We serve all of Ple Pleasure Island as well as the surrounding areas. Um, we are an active group of ladies, about 180 of us, um, and we uh, do a lot for the community, such as the beautification of the boardwalk. Uh, we do regular beach sweeps. Uh, we uh, do the little free libraries, we donate to public schools, our local schools, and also to many of the other nonprofits such as the Federal Point uh, Center, Help Center. Um, we are hoping to introduce a new fundraising initiative. I think you're familiar with some of our current fundraising initiatives such as the reusable bag campaign. Um, this would be a new event for us. Um, some of the concepts, it's a family fun, uh, friendly event. And you can see here just some of the seating and concepts we have. We have uh, signage and a kids activity area, uh, some cornhole, some face painting, some balloon animals, that kind of thing. We have um, 10, we're hoping to have 10 food trucks. You can see some of the food trucks that are interested in joining us on that day already. Um, two vans, some retail vendors. Um, an island woman tent, two bars, uh, as I mentioned, the kids' activity area, cornhole, and a sponsored tent. Um, the map, if I could share, is that up there? No, we can pull it up. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. No, no I didn't pull that. So here's what we're thinking about. Um, as you can see, the food trucks would um, line up along the side there. Um, we'd have our band, of course, in the center, our VIP on the island there. Um, these were the, the vendor tents, as you can see with the Vs, the bar near the band, and then also one down the way there near the kids' activity. We actually hope to do the kids' activity on the in front of the second entrance so we can keep the flow of the people going through um, the food truck there. Thank you. Perfect. And then we're not blind to the fact that this is going to be in the middle of a hurricane season. So we are hoping that we can get on your uh, calendar for backup weather dates of uh, September 26th, which is also another Sunday. But we will also be obtaining all the necessary um, insurances and all that jazz. So, um, and that's, that's it. If, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Otherwise, we really appreciate your time and consideration for this event. Um, I don't have any questions. Gentlemen, do you have any questions? I love food trucks. Mm. We should do more yeah. events, keep them rocking it. Yeah. It looks like a great event to me, as long as Tim's got Absolutely. To it out. So uh, we met and we did go through the um, event committee process with Island Women. Mm. Um, 
Normally, we don't have new events during from Memorial Day to Labor Day, um, but just such a crazy year that we've had. Um, a lot of things have been canceled. Uh, we were all for it from a staff perspective, so uh, okay. to go with the with the town. I only have one question: Is there, and it's really for staff. I assume sure. there's no problem getting the trucks in and out of there. No, no concerns about. No, I mean, and we've worked with the ops guys during that meeting, yeah. and they assured us that they're comfortable with that. So. Um, we feel like it'll be a, it'll be a good fit. Yeah. I, I do have a question. Sure, yes. Projections appear that our beach community is going to be even busier this summer than we probably have been. If we're, if we're honest with ourselves, it's been indicating itself the past month and a half. So if our community gets that big because of our visitors and our residents, what's the thought process on how you would space that out some so people feel comfortable amongst that mass? You meet uh, due to COVID, just yeah. the amount of. Because um, you also have that parking lot there on the side that, if need be, you could structure something so everyone's comfortable. Maybe make it strictly walking so that frees up that parking. That's a, a very good question and something we would definitely take under advisement. I don't have a great answer for you right now, but something we would say. We, we anticipated about a thousand people, which is what we're allowed to do currently. Um, but I definitely understand your concern and would the certainly uh, think about ways to space things out. The if, reason if I say that is that the Island Men's Mac and Cheese Fest, they didn't expect 3,000 people to show up at that one time. And if we were to just randomly assume that an awesome event like that would bring that number, then keep us in the loop so we see Absolutely. how it pans out. A very good point. We definitely but thank will. you. I think it's a great idea. So, so, so right now you're looking at uh, 10, 10 food trucks? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. The more the merrier. I love it. <laughs> Great, good. Totally. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. I think we need a official do you, vote. Do you need us to vote on that? Yes, please. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the Island Women uh, food truck event as presented. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank I you. I really appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Absolutely. We're looking forward to it. All right. Up next, I'd like to introduce the Island Men. They have the same idea we have. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I was about right. to say, uh, and, and, yeah. and, and, and forgive me uh, for not recognizing our former mayor, uh, Bob Lewis. Thank you for being here. I was kind of look at you when your mask on, it's kind of hard to tell people. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure the island women uh, can get some volunteers from the island men as well. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, guys. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we're here tonight to talk about a couple of things. I uh, sent everyone an email with my presentation and with our calendar. So there shouldn't be any surprises on it. But Donna Minna here is that opportunity of, for residents and visitors alike uh, to pleasure and to participate in a fun, patriotic event sponsored by the Island Men. Uh, first of all, as we get started, that was an amazing presentation, ladies. <laughs> and the Island Men pledge to help you pay for that, for all your time. Thank you. Um, it's on record. It's on record. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get out of it now. Yeah. Well, with, with council's help, you know, we had a lot of different events over the past year, and uh, I'm here to tell you that we made our budget and that our, our giving will not be influenced because of COVID, because we were very conservative in our budget. We made our budget, and we're, we've already given to each Girl Scout troop on the island uh, to already, and we'll continue with this uh, pledge that we just made to them. Mm -hmm. So, the Island Man proposing an Independence Day Patriotic Golf Cart Palooza. Notice it's not a it's not <laughs> a parade because the governor says uh, no parades. Hmm. That's right. To go along with our successful, our other successful previous golf cart events, the Halloween golf cart rally, and the holiday golf cart extravaganzas in Carolina Beach and Curry Beach. These events were very successful, fun, and we were organized them, and they were safe events for everyone. And we made some money, but I think most of all, people had fun. The residents of this island had fun doing all of the golf cart parades. Some people told me they liked mm -hmm. it better than other parades that they've seen. Mm -hmm. So we kind of built on that and said, if you go online, some of the biggest events in the country are golf cart July 4th parades. Mm -hmm. So working with the, with the people on the island, uh, specifically public, they were concerned about us doing it on the 3rd or the 4th, and we understood that. I'm sure the town would understand that too, as many people are gonna be here. So we're proposing that Thursday, July 5th, late afternoon, sometime between 4 
and six, we would leave the public parking lot. We have their permission, we have their blessing, and we will uh, promote it the same as we did in the past. Um, we, we think we'll have up to 100 uh, patriotic, non-political golf carts um, participate in the parade. We'll do a similar route. We may make some adjustments on it, but a similar route as the previous golf cart parades. The other thing, we propose to have it done. It'll be completed before any type of activities that Thursday night. Say the town plans to do some, or the chamber plans to do some activities. So I understand fireworks are going to be on Friday. Mm -hmm. We thought Thursday would be a good time just kind of kick off whatever is mm -hmm. going to be the weekend and try not to interrupt the major traffic Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Mm -hmm. So, so did you say July fifth? It's Friday first. first. He meant July first. Yeah. Said first. Okay. I said fifth. Yeah, you said fifth. That's okay. First. first. Okay. Look at the calendar Thank now. You. Thursday the first. So, and we do a fairly good job of promoting our events. I know y'all see them on all the social media. So, mm -hmm. the Halloween event, we Bob and I were shocked. We're the executors of whatever administrators of our website. We had thirty six thousand. Uh, people see our post. I'm going to ask anyone in the room, guess how many we had for the last Christmas extravaganza? Two million. No, 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 no. 76,000 people saw our Christmas. That's where all the crowds came from. 76,000 people saw our post on the uh, Facebook and on other other social media. So anyway, we do a pretty good job about that. So what are we asking for the city? Same as the other two, three uh, events that we had, some, some a short period of time of police escort to shut down Lake Park so we can leave the public parking lot. And then at the other end of Lake Park, short time shut down so that we can cross and get to the boardwalk. That's what we're asking. So um, we thank you for your support on this. We think this might be our biggest mm -hmm. golf cart mm -hmm. uh, Palooza mm -hmm. ever to be held mm -hmm. in Carolina Beach. Of course, it will be the only one to ever be held in Carolina Beach. But, um, do you have any, any questions whatsoever? I do. Um, what time? I'm oh, sorry. What time is it? Are you going to have the parade? Well, Are there four and six? Like it'd be like between four. It's the afternoon. Six, the afternoon. Late so afternoon. So, so how do you define a short time? <laughs> well, the last ones we had all, all, all came in there under an hour and 10 minutes. No, you mean shutting down? Oh, Lake yes. Lake Park. yes. It was like less than 15 minutes, 15 minutes or so. Okay. It was so, yeah. up a lane for us. Right. I have a couple of questions. The success of those golf cart things were during the town's off season. So, again, the same question I propose is that if this event is something we're realistically we're doing for the happiness of our community, for our country, then I, m this is just a thought, why not move it to the Wednesday? Typically our community, if you run a business or anything, Thursday is what bangs everything for that week and that's a huge travel day. So our community really starts off that day because there's only three huge holidays that really affect this town and that's number one. So if it's something for the community, just an idea, that Wednesday, then you freeze up traffic or people know that, hey, this is our day because right. we're about to get wild with it. Yeah, we're not against that. I think we can, we can play with those things. We, we really want to make it so that the people mm -hmm. who live here aren't burdened either. So, right. you know, if you, <laughs> if you have people coming in, visitors coming in, and we have major traffic that we normally yeah. have just getting home from work, we don't, we don't want to put that back on the back of some of these people. Is, so your first your first two events were extremely successful. They were. And, and the community just absolutely loved it, right? I, I, I do have a concern being the beginning of July um, because we see how busy it is right now. And uh, do I think it can work? I do, but I, am I concerned? I am a little bit personally. I mean, it's... It's crazy, right? I mean, July. Yeah, and, and I, I agree. That's my only concern as well. I mean, you know how traffic does back up over the bridge. Um, so you're talking um, 15, are, are you going to cross Lake Park twice or are you going to travel down Lake Park? Uh, no. Uh, we cross Lake Park, travel down, for, pass from, from Publix all the way down to basically the same the old, uh, sounds like a name. I know that's going to be a big check-in day. Harper. Mm -hmm. Harper. 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 Yeah. Harper. We turned on Harper, went up Harper. to the neighborhood, 
and then came back down Cape Fear, and the police Perfect helped us right. get across Cape Fear. And it was less than 15 minutes, probably easily. Is it possible? Just another random idea mm -hmm. that I just was thinking of. What about if you come out of Publix and you make a left on St. Joseph? Go all the way around, you pass traffic under the bridge, you cut on the Dow mm -hmm. for not even a quarter mile to get onto uh, Harper, then you go down 7th or 6th to cut through Carolina Sands, and then you're not really affecting any of that. Yeah. Then you come back and cut through. It, 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 it's not a great idea because everyone's mm -hmm. secluded to that area. The problem is the speed yeah. limit at 45 miles an hour, no golf cart on that street. That's right. For the mile, plus, we have yeah. top assistance for plus golf carts. I mean, battery life. Yeah, the I mean, battery so. life is an issue because yeah. we had lost a lot of them. Right, I remember that. All the way to Carolina Sands and down and around, we lost probably a third of the. Yeah. So, so my comment. We also want to maximize the number of people, yeah. and the number of people in yards that they have. Um, and I live on St. Joseph, and I love right. it, but yeah. there's not that many yards that yeah. you can yeah. go by. And and Flint had, yeah, so my yeah. You guys know when you proposed the first one, my concern was all around public safety, yeah. right? I mean, that was really – and and I commend you guys because I think the first two events that you had like this, you said I – th I think you may have even said in that meeting, give us give us a shot, and I, th I think you proved yeah. uh, two times over that you can do these fairly safety safely. So my only real question would be, did staff have any issues – from uh, the police department, public safety officials about what they're trying to do was was any noted? No, the last two events we didn't, and and it really um, is very little burden on town staff besides the police department. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how busy. It, I can't anticipate how busy it'll be on that island that day if if Chief Griffin has questions about fire. Um, but it was just generally the police were the only town services that they needed really. Um, if we could alleviate that Publix to Harper, I think that's the probably going to be your biggest hiccup. Because coming from Cape Fear over to the boardwalk is, is really nothing. Right. Um, but trying to get from Publix to Harper might be your... But it worked well before. Yeah. So, I mean, we had no complaints. We had nothing but positive things from, from the so last I'm a, two. I'm going to defer that. I have the same concerns. I think we're all giving you the same concerns, but yeah. I'm going to defer that to pu the public safety guys and, and, and look to the chief yeah. to speak up if he has issues and work with you guys. If he feels like you need to move your route. Or I mean, we have – we have he knows this way better than, than I yeah. do. We have another events committee on Tuesday. Uh, if you want to hold off and, and put it to – I don't know if that's okay. With, does that mess you guys up, Bob? No, uh, waiting. I think okay. you guys have done a phenomenal yeah. job, oh, yeah, uh, and, and it's great for the community. Yeah, okay. I, the, uh, my only hesitation is the same, yeah. is yeah. you know how much traffic will back up if we close Lake Park, and, and, and you know how yeah. it's been the last two weeks. I can tell you we've had one of the highest record-setting marches that we've had in years, so I can't imagine what July is going to be like. Well, you put all the extra parking out there. Right. That's right, that's right, <laughs> it's parking. So, 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 so how many uh, golf carts are you talking about? It could be, we could think be it could be 100. Yeah. Maximum we had before was 80. Right. That was, a, right. was our Christmas one. But Christmas yeah. we had 84 carts. And um, as, as same as with them, we have a waiver, and we include the city of Carolina Beach right. in the waiver, and that's right. past your yeah. legal department. And one of our members is a $500 an hour lawyer or $600 yeah. an hour lawyer, and yeah. he wrote it. So I trust that it's real written, real well written. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we will, we will – that in yeah, I think the coordination with the police department okay. this time is yeah. is, okay. is is it's different and than the first. That's two. my only concern yeah. at all. Right. I mean, and and right. I, I think you trust staff to to minimize any time on Lake Park. Right. Well, Lee, Bob, I you know me, I love I I think they were amazing. Oh, they are amazing. My I said my piece. And I I think that Wednesday for. Okay. But I love the idea. You, I'm behind you guys. It's. I think that whole week's gonna be crazy. Honestly, it's already uh, crazy. I mean, I mean it's been backed up today. to. <laughs> I mean, even during the week, uh, spring break, we were backed up to Monkey Junction. Yeah. On and off the bridge, which was crazy. Appreciate what you guys. Time, do. I think we gave you some information. We're, we plan on a number of events as COVID kind of is getting in in the uh, right. vaccination to get there. We're hoping to have those shows. The Dragon Boat event we're still planning to have them in uh, September, and then we also have a couple other things going in the year. We wanted you to know that uh, you probably heard about Tough Up the Soldiers is closing the stores, but they're right. doing some other things for veterans. 
the same time, they're kind of partnering, letting us take over the barbecue cook-off, bring it back to Carolina Beach. Yeah. So next year, nice. so next year we'll probably come back. We'll come yeah. back before that time frame and talk yeah. to you about it. But so we'd, we'd also like to get those dates on the calendar now. It's March 25th and 26th. I mean, that's how far. Now March 25th of next year? Yeah. Yes, next year. Wow. That's how far we're looking yeah. out. Um, yeah. For the barbecue. <coughs> right. Yeah, that's uh, the barbecue. That's when they normally hold yeah. it that okay. weekend next week. We are, we've already got the dates established for the Halloween golf yeah. cart rally for the Christmas extravaganza. Those are all in the email that I sent to you. Yeah. December, October 23rd, December 11th, uh, December 12th. Miss Pleasure Island, we are working with Fort Fisher and uh, getting that field with the open stage. Yeah. We'll do all Miss Pleasure Island in October. Outside? Outside with the island women. Um, we wouldn't have restrictions on the number of people there and uh, we've already met with them yeah. once and they're open to the, to the yeah. concept. They're kind of, uh, they want to have some, <laughs> some cool rules <laughs> right. for the talent yeah. or lack thereof. <laughs> So, also, uh, we'll be working every fireworks event for the North End, doing all the uh, safety for North End. Every Wednesday night, we sweep the beach mats for Kevin and his, his yeah. group and clean them. So, uh, and, then, and bringing the barbecue back to the beach, that's going to be a big event for the town. Yeah. And uh, Jim from Step Up Soldiers, he's already agreed to give us all the names, all the entrants, all the people that participated, how they did it. Right. And we believe we could do it as good as they could, if not bigger. Yeah. But so appreciate your time. Then. Yep. Awesome, thank, thank you. you, guys. You, can, you guys do great stuff. Well, that's what I was going to ask, Mayor Pierce. Are we going to are we giving them conditional? Are we going to vote on conditional approval, assuming the chief's okay, or do you want them to come back? Do we want them to come back with I the am, chief? I am looking at Bruce for that yeah. answer. You could come you could back. vote on the condition that the uh, police department clears it. Yeah. Or, or okay. coordinates. Are you guys okay with yeah, I'm fine with yeah. it. And we'll do that at our events committee on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you so as presented with consent of first responders. So we so we need to make a motion to yeah. approve. Okay, I make a motion to approve uh, their golf cart, whatever name they use this Pal time. Palooza. 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 Thank you. That's for the Fourth of July, conditional yeah. on the police department's approval. Right. Yeah. Okay. Motion on the table. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, guys. Your Thank motion you. was for the first of July, not for the last day of June. Uh, for the proper day in July, whatever. I don't know which yeah. day. I, I would yeah. go to the police chief. Yeah. Please okay. okay. that very okay. question. All right. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guys do. Appreciate it. Okay. Up next. Um, uh, as you've noticed, we've had uh, several filming projects the last couple months. Uh, we have one more that we're, uh, staff is working on a permit for. I'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Brandon Gertz. Um, he is working with Netflix on this latest project, and I will let him get started. Yeah. Thank you, guys, uh, for your time and your consideration. Um, it was Brandon? Yes, sir. Welcome to Carolina Beach. Thank you. See uh, the family feel? <laughs> yeah. Well, and uh, you're starting out in black and yeah. white, so... <laughs> You're, you're behind already. <laughs> yeah, you got it. We, we'll get to the color ones here in a second. And uh, Tim, just for my benefit, I'm, I'm just cycling through with this right button? Or? Uh, just the right. Okay. Go to the left okay Welcome to our community. Uh, so, yeah, my name is Brandon Gertz, and I actually live in Wilmington, North Carolina. I live off Carolina Beach Road in Sunset Park. Uh, so I've been here since about 2009, uh, and I bought my house there in 2015. But uh, I have not been working in this state for over six years. I've been on the road traveling, uh, working in Georgia, South Carolina, Florida, Louisiana, every other place but home. So it's with great honor that I'm standing here today. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And uh, that, that is the kind of one of the themes of this entire project is that we are hoping to bring this project here into the area and successfully uh, pull off the project and uh, be able to establish the, uh, the continuation of the film industry that we've had here for over 40 years. Um, and in that right, uh, it's with, uh, with great honor that I'm here to be able to sp uh, speak to you guys about this project. It's a coming of age love story that is focused on a uh, teenage couple. So it's a, a teenage coming of age love story. And the main character, Auden, is, uh, she grows up in a strict household and has had a kind of a repressed lifestyle. And so she hasn't done much. She hasn't played Connect Four. She's never played Putt-Putt. She's never been to do a lot of things that other people have done. 
she travels to go visit her dad's side of the family uh, for the summer, and she goes to a beautiful beach town that kind of opens her world to what, uh, different from what it was in the past, it takes her out of her comfort zone, and in that place, she finds a boy who is a little bit more adventurous. He's a BMX biker. They fall in love, and he convinces her to go out on an, a quest list to take on some of the things that she's never accomplished or done in her life to kind of uh, bring her that. So that's, you know, b uh, general basis of the story and its focus. Um, and so ultimately, I knew right away we would want to be down in this area because it has the look and feel um, and also the types of environments and types of looks that they're looking for for this particular project. Um, so yeah, I've just got a couple of photos here. Uh, you know, this is our permit and all the information of our dates and filming activities. Uh, but uh, obviously, Carolina Beach Boardwalk, uh, the boardwalk plays a special place in the story for where she goes to read every day, and she ends up meeting the boy out there after seeing him several different times. So it's an important piece of, uh, of where this will be. Uh, the, the scuba shop and Melissa's Point Laundry kind of play uh, two pivotal uh, locations, and a scuba shop, which uh, we'll be converting into what is kind of like a speakeasy pie shop. Uh, the, a local gentleman in the town owns a lot of different properties in the area, one of them being the laundromat, and he builds in a secret pie shop that only the locals know about that they go to to have a nice cup of coffee or a piece of pie. Um, so th th that's kind of what we're looking at at these places. Um, North End Java Stop is, uh, is plays our Beach Beans, which is a, a popular coffee shop in the story. And uh, some of the characters travel between that to different locations that feature as uh, as the main characters' houses. Um, Naughty Dog, uh, we're in talks with them as well uh, for what is the local fast food restaurant and and uh, a popular hotspot for all the locals to go to. Uh, Pleasure Island, we we're talking to them about the bike shop, which is a, an important place where the main character works. Um, and then we have several residents that will be using. Also, Nest Realty, uh, we're talking with them about converting that into a boutique where the four main girls work at uh, for uh, a majority of the movie. That's where they're, they're working their summer job. Um, so these are just some more of the, of the locations that we're, we just wanted to show kind of where we're planning or what we think uh, some of the, the areas will look like, you know, uh, once we get them on film. Havana's Restaurant, Carolina Smokehouse, uh, the downtown Carolina Beach area. Uh, there's a lot of different places that we're liking to or looking to uh, film and, and really capture the beauty, the essence, and uh, and and use that as as what is kind of the setting for this for this environment that helps uh, grow the character. Um, all story stuff aside, um, I a coming from Wilmington want to make sure that this goes smoothly for the public first and foremost. That's my job as a location manager is A, to provide the director what they want for the script and the scene work, but more importantly, to make sure that I take uh, every measure possible to mitigate all risks and concerns, work with the homeowners, business owners, um, neighbors, to make sure that they're aware of the process, what will be entailed, so that they're uh, aware of the, what the process would be like and not caught off guard um, by some activity that they were not previously uh, aware of. And in addition to that, um, like I said, wanting to rebuild the industry here is an important focus for us. And, and, and also knowing how busy Carolina Beach gets at this time of year, moving into these beach months, moving up and towards Memorial Day, uh, has been my focus fr from the very get-go to get out here as early as possible, talk to all the business owners, talk to the people we'll be working with, talk with Tim, talk with the police department, try to figure out what plans uh, would work and which ones would be more problematic and then to try to develop our schedule based off of that, which is what we, we tried to do, is try to execute most of the places that we were concerned about uh, how our impact would be as early in the schedule as possible, allowing us to try to get some of the beach work here and in Curry Beach, Fort Fisher, out of the way, and then uh, uh, accomplish some of our scenes that we have in Wilmington proper, uh, Oak Island, and Bolton um, that would be a little bit less impact to uh, to the activity that would normally be going on um, in this area. Um, so that being said, we've also included some overheads that kind of go over a daily breakdown of where we'll be looking to be and go. Um, this here is our first day of filming, Wednesday, April 21st. And uh, for instance, one of the things that is um, beneficial about a movie that has so many locations like this one does is that we're not 
necessarily in one particular space for too long. We do have two locations that we'll be at for an extended amount of days. Um, but for the most part, a lot of our filming days were, were a place for four hours. We moved to somewhere else for about three hours, and then we're moved to another place for about five hours. So we uh, are kind of uh, moving uh, along between the locations, even with inside of a daytime, to minimize the impact um, and uh, and be able to uh, to accomplish the scene work without causing a whole lot of disturbance to the businesses. And for instance, this being the first day up, we've done a lot of legwork. In fact, we know every business owner that is in the downtown business area. We've had com uh, communications with them about the type of filming activity that could possibly happen. And uh, as of yesterday, I had three individuals go down there and drop off letters with every business talking about the dates and times for not just the first day of filming, but our second day of filming that would have a little bit of filming out towards the boardwalk area. So we wanted them to know when and where we would be and also to talk to them about what we could do to mitigate the kind of impact that we would have to their normal business goers. Uh, all of them are very excited about the process and, and uh, really eager to have us here and have us back in town. Um, but that being said, uh, we have, this is the April 22nd uh, date where we'll be moving um, from our bike, uh, bike shop area. We'll shoot a scene there for the beginning of the day. We'll move out to the north end of the boardwalk. There's one scene that they want to get uh, overlooking the bench, looking towards the water. And then we would move back into the alleyway a little bit more towards the evening um, and shoot a, uh, a shot of the main character walking down the uh, boardwalk alleyway and then return back to the board, uh, bike shop after night has fallen to do uh, an interior shot inside their garage, which is the bike shop repair area proper. Um, I, I, get, I don't know if you guys really want me to go through every scene or location, but I'm more than happy to do that. I just don't want to waste too much of your time. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Have you, sp again, the same question we asked the last one is, uh, have you spoke with our police chief or our fire chief to make sure they're capable of what's happening next Wednesday and Thursday? Yes, sir. Uh, we had the... They did come to the events committee meeting. The police was represented, so they're w working with them, so they're coordinating. And if I'm 154, you only have to show it all. I think it's great what you guys do. It's been a while since you guys come back to uh, North Carolina, so glad this is it. Just, just to touch on two of the ones that will be the probably the biggest or longest term impact, uh, Nest Realty uh, playing the boutique will have four days of filming, and being that it's right there on Cape Fear Boulevard, I know this is a prime spot as far as influx of the downtown traffic going down to that beach area. Um, we do not have any plans for any road closures to deal with the scene work that is accomplished in this scene work. And at this point, none of the scene work has any uh, closures projected. Okay. I, I've been limited them to ITC for very small amounts of time. In fact, one of the scenes where we have Beach Beans that's on Carolina Beach Avenue North, I've spread that scene out is over a couple of different days. So we don't go down there and we don't have ITC run in that one spot for 12 hours. We go down there for three hours of one morning, we get out of there and we go back to a house and we shoot that the rest of the day. And then on another day, we're, sh we're shooting at the house, we go down there for a few hours in the afternoon, we get out the way. So I've tried as much as I could to try to help uh, production find a, a plan that's suitable. Are you saying there's no road closure on Cape Fear? That's correct. Okay. There's, that, that's correct. I know there are residents who live um, in that area that would need yeah, to get to their properties. There's several residents in the, the new condo building that's right I mean, above if you're closing them. Nest and you're filming there, that's between you and them, but... Yes. The streets are what we care about, just yes. and access and to other properties. Nest has a loft apartment above their their uh, property that, that also is rented out. Uh, but yes, we we're in contact w with everybody involved in the area. Essentially, that's what we try to do is <laughs> gather as, as much information about the people that are in pro close proximity and try to figure out what their concerns are and make sure we can. Well, you're, them. you're not going to have to worry about that. They're going to let you know. <laughs> yes, Anna. Do you have a slide with the? Uh, I see the dates on the various slides. Is there one slide that has all the dates on it? Sure. Um, this breakdown at the beginning, I think, has a good, it might be a little tough to see that at the 22nd, 23rd. Yeah. So, 21st, 22nd. we essentially start with a few light days in the first early week. Our dates for the Clementine is uh, May 11th through the 14th. So that's, that's one of our big chunks of a mainstay in one particular place. The other location that has a lot of continued activity for several days uh, is uh, five days in a row at a property on Carolina Beach Avenue North um, at uh, 1708. And it's a, a residential property. Major uh, in fact, most 
if not all of the filming is inside the, the property itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I don't so. think we care about that, honestly. I mean, I don't, I'm not trying to be well, too direct, but I, what we care about is any closures to streets or access to other people's properties. Right. That's what I care about. No, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, and I'm, that, I'm guessing Tim has already gone over that. It's all weekday stuff. And it's all weekdays, right? Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's all weekdays. Yes, sir. So uh, traffic yeah. would be the other one if they created, yeah. even though the road's open, if they're creating traffic. But it sounds like it's all weekdays. As long as there's still ingress and egress is, is my biggest concern. So I see all the dates. It's just hard for us to look at this and, and tell, you know, So, so I do have really I do doing. have one question. Um, will the crew be eating local or because of covid will they will you guys have your own well your own definitely eating? with our breakfast and lunch the catering company is is a part of the crew just as much as everybody else because they get roped into our turnarounds and uh, have right. this ready at 4 a.m and 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 the the kind of whims that that go along with some of the film industry right um, but there are certain times where we have additional meals or other things that are brought into set and that's definitely something that we're working to figure out which uh which people would be able to help us contribute awesome. to those types of meals um, yeah. And then, for instance, um, you know, tomorrow we're going on our tech scout. Uh, basically, for the next two days, I take every department head to all 30 loca- 35 plus locations for the movie. Yeah. And tomorrow, uh, I've been working with Adele at Havana's, and we're going to do outdoor seating. Even though we have COVID uh, measures, yeah. I wanted to try to make sure that if we could, we could yeah. g- get something arranged with Havana's to do that. Yeah. We're going to do outdoor seating there. I appreciate uh, and that. And so we've got yeah. a 45 or so top going down yeah. there tomorrow. Awesome. Uh, at one uh, but yes sir basically in any instance or, or uh, uh, opportunity to available is right. something that I like to try to do is, is try to find yeah. local vendors local caterers local people that can contribute to uh, to what we're trying to yeah. do absolutely I appreciate that yeah, just to follow up on I think that's key for future not necessarily for this project but for future successes I think the town has always been open to the filming that's gone on here and you know I think it's been well received yeah during the COVID measures, we did hear some blowback from some of the vendors because everything was so contained. Right. They basically saw very little benefit from it. So anything where you can build bridges and utilize our vendors, I think will yeah. help your project and it will also help with future projects. I think that's where you were heading, right, Jay? Yes, yes, yeah. I was. I mean, it's yeah. it's extremely organized. I mean, you know, Netflix does a great job, period. And it, I think it's great for our community when we have uh, film crews here. I, I think it's just fantastic. Uh, it's What's good for the our end, brand. I'm sorry, go ahead. Mm-hmm. What's the end date? I see June there. June 4th it was. It's now June 3rd is our final day of filming. Um, and, and like I said, a lot of those that after Memorial Day, we're outside of Carolina Beach. We're uh, in Wilmington, Wilmington huh. and uh, Oak Island uh, area as well. And uh, yes, another Wilmington location. So yeah, we're 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 clear of the island. I believe uh, the 28th or the 27th is our last day of filming okay. uh, on Carolina Beach, and and that whole week we're tucked inside the house on the top of the north end. So yeah, at that point we'll have trucks in place. We'll have everything going that whole week. It'll kind of be <laughs> routine at that point. We'll get all that stuff done out there, and then start to wrap out some of the and things that are. In and the I place. echo um, my council um, members' uh, words. Uh, we, we're glad you're bringing this to Carolina Beach. Uh, the only thing we don't want to do is impose on other businesses who this is their first season after COVID, you know, yeah. to really um, recoup some of that. So I guess, um, and, and I didn't mean to interrupt your presentation at, at all. No, we're just trying to, you know, wrap my head around, you know, wh- what all these dates were, like you right. said. And Tim, is there anything that should red flag us? I know you know where they are, so. I don't think so. Um, I, I've been working with Brandon a lot the last uh-huh. couple of weeks. They're very organized. I, I can't think of a question we haven't hit him with that they haven't had an answer for. Um, I think, you know, like the Cape Fear was, was the only concern yeah. I really had where Nest Realty is. Um, but even if there's just intermittent closing while they're setting up trucks, I don't, I don't mm-hmm. see it's going to be a big impact. I mean, I don't think it would be a big impact there. So I, th- I think they have a great plan, and uh, it, it's, it should go off without a hitch. Well, I know all the other um, filming that's been going on, and you have been directly involved, and it has went off so smoothly. So yeah. I'm assuming you're going to be by I'll the be phone re- and directly involved yeah. in this one as I'm well. I'm trying to get opposite Catherine Zeta jones on this one who's in, who's in this film but you think are I'm a little hollywood too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i would say you're welcome to interrupt me at any time most people do if not i'll talk my head off all day long <laughs> and uh it, it is something like for, for in particular like that is the probably the the, the longest setup mm. that will be in the downtown area constantly 
So those, those neighbors in the vicinity and, and businesses that are in the vicinity are going to be huge, huge uh, people that we're going to have a, a good relationship with to make sure it goes smooth for them so that it goes smooth for you guys as, as a whole. And, you know, it is a big movie. It is going to be a big experience. It is going to be a big endeavor. It's going to be something that's going to be a little bit more impact than just a high town coming in for one location for one day and moving out and another thing coming in for one day and moving out. This is something that's really going to be here and kind of get in with the community a lot in a good way. I mean, right now we know a lot of people and they're all really excited about working with that process. And as you know, the process is, a, is involved and there's a lot of things that go on that we need to try to figure out with everybody involved. You know, and one of those things there, like we're, we're, we're going to potentially, if we have the money in the budget, to do a, a scene where we make it rain on the outside of Clementine's on one of those days that we're filmed there on that Friday, which that'll be a busy activity and a lot of stuff going on. But it'll honestly be something where everybody's going to be standing around watching mm -hmm. a spray fake water you know, or real <laughs> water onto the uh, to building. So it's something that uh, what I'm getting at is that the the trade-off for having that much activity and impact with the community is that the community is totally involved with the filming process they become a part of the movie themselves they're part of the crew and they're excited about the movie coming out just as much as anybody else and we're staying in that area for a longer extended period of time so the economics of what we're doing in that area sees a lot more hit into the to the pockets of this community and to the coffers of this community than if we're just you know in and out in and out um, that being said, we're spending a good chunk of time here. We're spending a little bit of time in Curry, a little bit at Fort Fisher, a little bit at Wilmington, but I would say a good 60% of the movies in Carolina Beach, and it's really the, sh the showcase uh, of the story and, and, and of, of the action of a lot of the characters. So, uh, you know, I, I know it is a big endeavor to have something like this go on, especially at this time of year going right up into Memorial Day. Um, but the burden of work of making sure that this goes well for the people and for Tim and for everybody in the area is, is on me um, and, and on my team. And uh, we, we take that very seriously. Um, we, uh, we lose sleep uh, to make sure that other people don't. Brandon, uh, it feels like we're all on the same page. Uh, the only thing we, I think, have is as long as our concerns are addressed, that I think it's going to be a beautiful relationship to start off and say thanks. But as long as those things are, then it seems very well put out. I agree. Thank you. I'm all for it. All good. 100%. All right. Any questions? Nope. Nope. Okay. Do you have any more questions for me? Yes. Yes, sir. One of your first slides, you had two events on May 8th, but I don't see it in my packet. Can you go back to it so I can see what those two were? Do we need to approve Yeah, this? I can tell you that. The, no. Uh, okay. All right. Um, the first one, uh, Thanks, Brandon. Councilman Thank Garza. You, I appreciate your presentation. Thank you. I, the first one's that Thank surf you for dog experience. That is on the north end at the north end pier. It begins at 830. Is that the one that was pushed off from last year? Uh, no, he did have that event last year okay. as well. Um, so that's 830 to 1130. And, the and then the street art festival is that same Saturday uh, from 10 to 4. Yeah, I don't like to do simultaneous events, but I, I think this will work fine with one at the north end. Can you go back to that image? of the? Uh, oh, sure. It just made me think of a few questions. How's that layout going to be? Is, is it along that or are you stretching it to the parking lot or um as far as i know market? i believe the cb street arts festival is going to be very similar to what farmers you see market. at the farmer's market okay appreciate it when does sure. the farmer's market start farmer's market starts <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> never mind never mind i didn't answer goes through the middle of october <laughs> come on hollywood <laughs> you got this oh, my goodness <laughs> sounds soon interesting. you can let us know you wake will. up at 3 a.m. and it'll hit you. I hope oh, Paul's not watching this. I walk out that door. <laughs> second week in May. I, I Thank think you. it's yeah, something. Yeah, it is the second week in May. Second week in May, right? Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you, Town Council members. Appreciate Thank it. You, Tim. Thank you. Tim, you've been doing a good job. Thank you very Thank much. You. I appreciate it. We know you're doing a good job because nobody's complaining. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. Um, and other things. Uh, managers' updates. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, first, you know we had the vaccination site at the rec center yesterday. It was a big success. Mm -hmm. We don't have the total numbers, but I'm, it was steady. I know we had up to 30 people in an hour at one point, so um, I think we had a lot of people get vaccinated yesterday, and they'll come back in three weeks to get the second mm -hmm. shot. Um, first update I have for you is a legislative update. Our work with uh, Representative McIntyre and Warden Smith and the Ferguson Group. 
they're still working closely with um, Congressman Rouser and our senators and others working on getting some federal money for beach nourishment. They are cautiously optimistic that we can get some appropriations from OMB, Office of Ma uh, Management Budget, that we didn't get early this year. So they're working diligently on that. Um, he also brought to me some information on the community project funding. Uh, we've talked about earmarks are legal again in Congress and they're working on that and we're putting together, we went through a whole bunch of projects with them to discuss which ones were viable. And the one that was the most viable and we're working hardest on is some um, improvements to the lake park. We went through some, we gave them the master plan, worked through what things we could come up with. Um, there's only up to a certain amount of money you can get or you have to spend it in, and there's a certain amount you can get and then the total amount you've got to spend with that you match within 12 months. So we dialed back what we're trying to do this year to include the matching money for the playground that we've already applied for a grant. So that would it'd be the other part of the match, a new restroom at the lake. And, um, and the location of the restroom would alter the picnic shelter, so we need a new picnic shelter. So that's what we're putting in for. He's working with us closely. We're finalizing that. And I believe I have uh, a letter from the, the mayor to sign on that project. There's a deadline for that. Well, tomorrow is when we got to have that into him. He's been working that it's a because it's just all happened like this through Congress approved it, and he's working that we gave him a list of from water projects to all that, and we went through them all and what the total amount of money was, total match, and the time frame we could do it. And this is one of the ones we could do it, but this should be an ongoing uh, cycle, so we should be able to apply for more things next year and be better prepared to come up with a a better layout of what we really want to get done next year. It's X amount of projects per dollar per 12 months. Yeah, e each each congressman gets 10 projects that they can apply or try to get earmarks. Oh, no, what I meant is, what if we happen to have another project that we could do in that same time frame, like stuff at Mike Chapel, like that bathroom or the sheds, right? Right. If it's something we're going to do anyways, we can match to match that, and now we may yeah. have something better we anticipated. Yeah, we am definitely could look at it that way too. Yep. So that, that's the legislative update. He can, he's continuing to work on the Matsu issues and our other issues we're working with him on. So it's so if, if we if we do get the federal funding, um, uh, is this year still feasible or is it pushed out to next year? No, so the, no these for the for the beach nourishment. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're we're they're moving forward with the designs, um, the engineering and specs to move forward beach nourishment. It all comes down to funding. So, right. okay, so we're we're moving forward as if we're getting the funding. Okay. What's our contingency plan? Well, there's finding the funds ourselves th with our partners, um, or putting it off for another year. And right. you know, we that's the, the the option we don't want. But right. That is one. It, so I was over at the uh, rec center yesterday about three o'clock, and at that time, I think they had over 200 people that got okay. vaccinated. So that was a that's a big. That's a big win for this yeah. town, so that's a great yeah, job right so. there. Okay. All right. um, next thing I want to discuss with you, with the council about, is the Hamlet Ocean Rescue Public Restroom Facility. As you know, we put out a design build last year, came in um, more than we wanted to. We held off thinking building costs would go down, so we rebid the project. Building costs didn't go down, they went up. Um, so we've been doing some value engineering and we were getting ready to put out the bid. It's going to cost some money to rebid it again, but we wanted it just run by council because we made some engineering, value engineering decisions that will have to be re-engineered to be put out for bid. And before we did, we just want to give council, and this is a, one of the renderings of, um, I don't know if this is the final rendering, but what we're doing doesn't really affect the vision or the, the appearance too much. Um, it does bring it down to gray, so we'd have to flood proof it where this is an elevated structure. It just wanted council's take before we do that um, we expect this new value engineered where we you know cut back on things will probably come back in as much if not more than the last thing we bid out so we are just want to get council's input whether to continue the value engineering or do we want to go back to what we originally were looking for and just take a chance on bidding that because we don't think materials have gone down any if I guess not the, so I guess the two questions I have is does it meet the needs for chief and what's that gap of the pay? Because yeah. it has been a year and a half that we've pushed this off. And yeah. those are the two factors that would be key. I think both of them would meet the, the, the basic needs. I think we all would prefer, think this, the original design is a better functioning and a, a better better aesthetics, mm -hmm. but it, it will cost more. We don't know how much 
because we haven't got an engineer to do it, the value engineering, you know, we're talking about reduced materials, getting rid of the elevated <coughs> structure, things like that. We don't know how much it'll reduce, but it would reduce. But then we didn't want to provide something that council's not pleased with and the citizens aren't pleased with. Can you tie this into the last thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I mean, we, we, we are with the, you know, still talking an infrastructure bill and we're, Warden Smith and the first group are eyeing that for us too. Any any projects we can attach to, yeah, that'd be awesome. We're looking for, or if we find other projects that will free up money for these projects. Mm -hmm. But to answer your question, I'm, I mean, I'm fine with the valued engineer design. Yeah. So I like that. the word choice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bruce, my, I'm sorry, Jay. No, you're fine. Go. You're good. We always want things as cheap as possible, right? right? I mean, and we see your, at least I'll speak for myself, I see your staff trying to cut those things down. My concern here is if you continue to re-engineer, do you end up with less than what you need to do the job right, right? So I, I don't want to say, hey, I, I support you spending more money, but at the same time, you need, I would encourage you to target the design that you need to perform the job properly first. And if that costs a couple more dollars, then it's just gonna cost a couple more dollars in my mind. I don't think we're talking no. many, many thousands of, uh, the hundreds of thousands of dollars different. We're talking about, so that would be my two cents, is let's make sure we're getting what serves our town appropriately first, and then we'll, we'll take it from there. Did you just echo me? Pretty much. <laughs> Johnny and you and I always echo each other. I mean, and Bruce, I agree. I mean, we've waited this long. We might as well get what we need. I mean, nobody can predict when the building prices are, are, are going to go down, but I know you're not going to start this until the fall at least. Right, right. So, um, that, you know, I'll just defer to you and, and the chief on that. Okay, all right. Thank you. That's the direction I need. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Last thing I have is the pack it in, pack it out. You know, we've been ongoing with that. Um, our public works crews um, will tell you it's been a success on their part outside of the boardwalk on the other beach accesses they've seen. Let's clarify that. Yeah, outside for, for the, the public. Yeah, not the boardwalk. The boardwalk the area is like it always has been. Yeah, it is. We did not yeah. remove anything. Lots of trash. Yeah, we haven't removed any trash cans, and there's still a lot of trash there. Okay. There's more trash there than there is where we don't have trash cans. Of course, there's a lot more people there. But we have found there's been less trash at the beach accesses than in the past when they've done their sweeps and, and, and coming through to change cans. And, and the rollout cans have been pretty empty. We are adding additional stickers to the cans. We're adding more signage. Um, thanks to Sheila, she's come out with some really nice brochures. We're going to um, provide all the hotels and property managers. We've looked at possible magnets and different things we do to just promote pack it in, pack it out. But we are seeing a um, success. We are hearing about the complaints on the boardwalk, but, but that's not where pack it in, pack it out is. On Sheila's piece, by the way, I did get forward to me, I think she sent out an email to, maybe it was a short-term rental list. I can't remember right. exactly yeah, what list it. that mm -hmm. was, but that obviously when you send something out, it comes right back and we see it anyway. Right. We hear from them anyway. And that was very well received. I think yeah. Yeah, they, they were appreciative, at least the person that reached out to me was very appreciative that the town was including them mm -hmm. in that process and communication and, and at least this one was very willing to participate. Great. Great. Yeah, so, so my take is I think it's a I think it's working. Okay. I truly do. I mean, uh, it's a it's a educational piece with with our residents and the people that visit here. And the only thing I can recommend right now is if we can get our beach umbrella and chair folks to maybe put a bag with the umbrella, I think it would be awesome. You know, or with at least a community. Right. right, and and our lifeguards, whenever they start, you know, give them twenty to thirty bags and and have them, you know, kind of monitor it. But I think it's been a big, big win. Um, I was out there. I walked ten blocks yesterday, and it was the only thing I did see is that people still have the automatic action of walking up there, like there's a trash can up there, <laughs> yeah. and uh, they don't have they don't have a bag, so. I, uh, more, more bags we get out there, the better. I like that idea. I tie the Jay's idea real quick. Is every year most businesses renew the business license. Maybe we amend our wording that says part of your business license says you have X amount of the CB bags yeah. with your, because it's beneficial for them. It's beneficial for us. 
Yep. Uh, I had a conversation with the resident, and we were speaking about this openly. It, so the education piece, we're doing a lot for what we can for these pieces. And a possible idea is, what if we had two or three volunteers with shirts that just randomly walk the beach on weekends? and Because uh, we're trying to gauge and imagine an interaction if you're on the beach and somebody walks up to you and says, hey, make sure you keep your stuff and take it out. Then you're like, man, that's kind of intrusive. I, that's what's up with that. But if you volunteer, it, welcome to our community. We're very proud of this. Uh, well, we do a pack it in, pack it out. Here's a bag. I hope you enjoy your time. Sorry for interrupting. Because then that icebreaker of an <laughs> interaction, yep. they're going to recall that. And that memory piece is always going to be, they loved us as coming to their community, and then they gave out bags. Yep. I think we've had that conversation with the mayor about beach ambassadors that other towns have done. That would be yeah. a great mm -hmm. program of having volunteers who promote those and the other rules on the beach without without being confrontational but, and also promoting the town itself. Yeah. Are we still okay. going to be getting signs that go on the other side? Yeah. I think, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, so I just want to make a comment to Sheila. You've done a great job. I'm copied on those emails as a hotel owner, and I think you're on top of it. She's doing a phenomenal job. Great idea. I mean, you picked the right person to put on that. So yeah. uh, very good. Uh, good job, Sheila. And, um, and just to the public, just a comment. When you're full, you're full. So when all the hotels and all the vacation rentals are full, it doesn't matter if it's March or April. It's not going to be any busier in July. Right. So if ever, so the last couple of weeks that we've seen here in Carolina Beach is very predictive, probably of the rest of the summer. So if the, if the last couple of weeks have gone fairly well, we've got a learning curve now to know where we need to focus, which is on that boardwalk. So, so I had a couple of comments on on that. First, I uh, was lucky enough to uh, get away. Uh, which we, my family hasn't been able to do for a while. And it's mm -hmm. interesting, once you start this program, every beach or town you go to, you see how they handle trash. Um, I visited a number of places that are doing pack it in, pack it out. Um, and there are no, I'm not suggesting we do this, but there are no trash cans anywhere. Not, not just not on the beach, but there aren't even any on this side. It is truly you take it with you. And if that can work, surely this can work. So I'm still pretty confident. Um, to the public, uh, I don't know what to tell people about social media, but you have social <laughs> media campaigns out there posting pictures of trash cans that are not even in this town. Right. Um, I think it's doing a disservice to the community. If you see legitimate concerns, I would ask you to bring them to the town manager. They're not perfect. They'll work with you, and we'll get those things resolved, but mm -hmm. uh, a little patience. Um, the other thing I had on pack, pack it in, pack it out, Bruce, was – we, as we talked about, was the downtown business district and the boardwalk area obviously has been a little rough, but we've also seen with the private parking lots, even though they are not operating, uh, even though they are not collecting fees because they can't by ordinance, they are operating. And it, by ordinance, they are supposed to have trash cans and daily trash service. So. When you look at that area, we have dropped, I am just making up a number here, 500 to 1,000 more people in that area with no trash service being provided by the, or at least it doesn't appear to me, I yeah. should say, right. doesn't appear to me to Good be point. providing trash service. Do we know if those parking lots are providing trash service or not as they're required to? I believe there are cans. I don't believe they're being serviced daily like they will have to, or required to be once they start charging for parking. Um, Maybe we check into that. Yeah. So I, and. and Jeremy has been working well on uh, um, potential ordinance changes yeah, that would address that, mm -hmm. that would require some parking and other requirements year-round for parking lots. Yeah I, yeah, I think if they are operating, I don't care whether they're charging or not, mm -hmm. if you are filling your lot with cars, yeah. you have a responsibility to deal with the trash. Right? Good point. My, that's my yeah. two cents. That's because a, a lot of that is, I mean, we just put, as Mayor Pierce said, we, we, we're full. And then mm. you put more people in that area, and now guess what? We have a trash right. problem. And it's not a pack it in, pack it out problem. We have right. a trash problem. Right. Right. So that's my two cents on that. I encourage you guys to keep pushing. You told us when you started this that I think, right? I think you said this is going to be a two year process. Yep. And the yep. first year will be just educational. So just want you to know, at least from my standpoint, we're still support. I'm still supporting. Yeah. Absolutely. I'd like 100%. to, uh, for, for pe people listening, if you don't mind, give you a quick history of this because I've been fortunate enough to be a piece of this. Uh, four years ago, I joined the Freeman Park Committee. A lot of our residents didn't know that Freeman Park, when we took it over, was always a pack it in, pack it out. So the Freeman Park Committee got really amped about, we need to make this not only Freeman Park, but the whole entire strand. 
and here it is four years later panning out to where after the research yeah two to three years it, it's going to be amazing and i think sometimes for any of them listening thank you because that was a fight that they started to try to push mm -hmm. yeah. what, uh, one more thing on the parking in the boardwalk area we did have a malfunctioning trash compactor over the past weekend that so they couldn't put as much trash in there wasn't compacting so we had some issues but we're also having some people who are using it without authorization to use that and we are going to put some signage and possibly camera up to catch people who are not who are using the, the, the trash cans for the businesses so we can monitor that closer too that'll help okay that's all i have yeah well okay any questions for bruce i i, I have one i wanted to bring up that I probably shouldn't, but I'm uh -huh. going to anyway. And this is really for the fire chief and, and for you, Bruce. It's easy to get misquoted in the media. I understand that. I've been misquoted plenty of times. But for the public, I would just like to hear from you guys a couple of, answer a couple of questions. And, Chief, you may want to answer these or you, Bruce. I don't know who wants to answer them. Can you give us a breakdown of your timeline of your response to the – Paradise Cove fire. Do you mind doing that? Okay. Just, just, just the highlights. Just to um, get some clarity, are you wanting uh, timelines of the response? The response. What times you get called? What times you show up? So, um, the the call came in to nine one one at twelve fifty nine. Um, we received the nine one one dispatch at one o'clock uh our first unit arrived at 104. actually three engines pulled up simultaneous and what is, what's what's a, what's the goal i mean what, what would be great response in your time in your view that that's probably as fast as we could <laughs> turn that out i mean the guys get the call we we require them during the day um we we like to see a, a one minute turnout a minute and a half uh, tops at night, we, we look at two minutes or less. That means they're in a bunk room asleep. The ability for four of them to go down and get on an engine, fully dressed, um, and head out the door. Oh. So, uh, like I said, to get that call at uh, 1300 and, and arrive at, at 1304, uh, fully dressed and, and pulling hand lines straight into fighting fire. So that it was, I don't think you could get it any better. It's amazing. Next, next, it is amazing. Next, next question for you, Chief, if you don't mind. Tell us who participated in the investigation of this fire with you, just the organizations. Okay, so um, at the fire, we uh, had a command post brought in from this uh, county. Um, it's actually part of the hospital system, the EMS system. So they brought in a command post, and we immediately I had uh, the town manager, the mayor, um, police chief, myself, uh, went into that vehicle and we kind of talked about what had happened. Um, this is right at the end of the fire. And at that point, we went ahead and made, sh made sure everybody understood their roles. Um, under general statute for fire, the, the fire chief has a uh, general statute requirement that they have to do a cause and termination on every fire. So it always starts with us as a lead. And if it becomes criminal, we, we involve the PD. But in, in these cases, we start off in the beginning together. It only makes sense. Um, and uh, as we were gathering our notes and dividing up who was going to start doing interviews and, you know, who was on scene, the, the interviews on scene, things like that, uh, the SBI showed up, which is pretty typical for a commercial or large fire, and they fell right into it. So from the very beginning, um, fire had to lead. PD assisted us and SBI was there, so we pretty much went into it all holding hands. Um, we went through what we could do that night, and then it got dark, so we put a police officer on the scene. We held the scene all night, uh, roped off, and we started back at daylight, or eight o'clock in the morning, we met back out there. And at that point, the ATF was involved. So when we started the actual on-scene investigation, um, it was fire, police, uh, SBI and ATF. So uh, to finish up this, and you'll see where I'm going, Bruce, have you received anything from any state fire marshal, SBI, ATF, any of those guys indicating in any way 
that we were not uh, that we were violating protocol in any way. No, nothing. So the only reason I brought that up, Chief, was just to make a long-winded point that you're doing a hell of a job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and I wanted the public to hear that. <laughs> Thank you for, for everything. We appreciate that. Thank you, Chief. Yeah, uh, Chief, and I think what you're hearing here from, from Council, and definitely you and I have discussed this, we stand behind you 100%. You know, uh, we know you guys have done a phenomenal job. You know, my son was a resident of that building. That is very um, personal to me. And um, fire department has been very near and dear to my heart since I moved to Carolina Beach. Some of my first friends that I made were on their fire department in Carolina Beach. So um, uh, you've got a great history of the tragedies that we've had here. And so, um, again, we support you and, and let your um, staff know that you're people and, and I appreciate it and you know the I've, I've got 28 years in the fire service and no no stranger to fire obviously uh, my deputy chief's 28 29 years he, and he is a certified fire investigator with state of North Carolina which is high as you can go um, and the captain that pulled up that day is probably pushing 40 years of service retired from Fairfax County Virginia now is a full-time captain with us so I don't think you could have had a better crew <laughs> and and we're very proud of how they perform so yeah. well we're proud of you too yeah and pass that on to them as well yeah. we, we definitely will department. Yeah. So and i think uh that ship's going to be on uh i've talked to the manager this morning you'd request that we have those guys in, in the near future come in so that ship that was working will be on uh tuesday week of of our budget retreat or budget uh, meeting they're going to come in the very beginning just so you guys can have a minute to Thanks. Awesome. Thank yep. you. And I will add that they did an unbelievable job. We're great to work. Alan provided great leadership. Also, we had great leadership from the police and, and that and our, Absolutely. our utility crews yeah. were out there cutting water off during yeah, while they were actively fighting fires. It was a yeah. great team effort and it was real impressive to watch. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. We have a great squad. And, and just for the public, because I have gotten several um, messages and text and inbox, it is still an active uh, investigation, and we do not have an answer for you yet on the cause of that fire. So. All right. Well, um, we will move into our uh, public comment. And um, anyone from the public who'd like to speak, you have three minutes to come up and do so. And if you would like to speak on any of the public hearings, we will allow public comment at that time as well. So is anyone from the public who would like to speak now? Kim, do, do, do we have any submitted online? Okay, um, if there's no one, we will move right into our public hearings. I'll make a motion to op open a public hearing to receive input on the 21-22 budget. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would anyone like to speak on the budget? Staff, are we gonna have a presentation? Yep, no. We are still preparing the budget. This is a chance, an opportunity for okay. public input. If there's some, and there will be more opportunities. Yeah, yeah, there'll be more opportunities to review the budget. This is one to see if there's any funding needs and requests outside of the nonprofits and other things we've done. Okay. Just, uh, but so. so if there's no one from the uh, public that would like to speak at the on the budget right now, we will have other opportunities as we go through our budget cycle. So I'll make a, a motion to close that public hearing on the 21-22 budget. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we will move into uh, open a motion to consider a text amendment to Chapter 40, Article 8 of Signs. All in favor? Aye. Miles? Good evening, Mayor Council. Happy to be in front of you all again this evening. As the mayor just said, I'm coming in front of you to handle a text amendment, finally updating our sign ordinance to comply with a 2015 Supreme Court decision in Reed versus Town of Gilbert. So we'll go over that background briefly so you understand what is happening, give you a rundown on some key parts of the ordinance, and hopefully get a motion from you all. So as you're aware, sign ordinances are utilized to handle the aesthetics of signs in regards to zoning ordinance and the appearance of a town, and it's carefully balanced with the ability to have free speech and open advertisement for businesses and opinions and things of that nature. However, sign ordinances, because of that, have sometimes shifted to become content-based as opposed to more uh, style or aesthetically based in regards to size and height and things of that nature. And in 2015, the Supreme Court came down and made a ruling that basically said, you cannot have a sign ordinance that dictates a sign's requirements, whether that's 
height, size, length of display, anything based on what that sign says as opposed to the type of sign of where it's located or its size or its height. So that, um, that fight was had. The Supreme Court made their decision and we did our research and a lot of other communities are doing their research and we had uh, 11 sign categories such as patriotic, subdivision, nonprofit, political, real estate, et cetera, that are all content-based regulations. So what we did is, <laughs> first of all, we got rid of those content-based categories as much as we could. Uh, we still, government still remains, so there are certain allowances that do remain. We went in and added a catch-all category for all of the temporary signage that we see around town as a result of various activities, political events, special events, to try and capture the ability to still have all of that signage available while not dictating it by its content. And we also added a, a regulation related to preventing entering interaction with that sight distance triangle obstruction that we see with fences and landscaping, but also to have that in with signs so that any if anyone's placing them right on the corner of their property and it's becoming a nuisance for traffic that we can deal with that, as well as uh, clarified and just corrected various language throughout Article 8. There were some disconnects with the way it was organized, so we, we think we set it up in a little bit more of a understandable manner for someone who is not in it every day like Jeremy and I, but is just trying to apply for a sign permit for their business. So one of the big highlights of the ordinance is the establishment of a yard sign category. So this is a non-commercial activity or event signage that is allowed to be placed on a parcel 30 days prior to an activity or event, remain up during said activity or event, and must be removed within 10 days of the conclusion of said activity or event. And this is our catch-all category. So this will handle your, I just replaced my roof sign where they want to advertise. This will handle the political election, the general election, and the primary election. These are actually, the timelines are actually taken from North Carolina General Statutes for political sign uh, time frame. So we, we found that and we thought that was a good idea to stick with. And you know, this gives us the ability and the community the ability to still express opinions, advertise special events, you know, talk about real estate, demonstrate that work was recently completed here all the while still giving us the ability to rein in the number of signs, which will be limited to four, the size of signage available on property, the location of the signage, et cetera. So we're trying to find that balance and it will be a work in progress. A major overhaul like this is always gonna have some things that staff did not think of, but we're fairly confident that we've put enough thought into this, that this is something that will at least allow us to enforce and deal with any issues moving forward. Idea, you know, with other text amendments, if there's an error that needs to be fixed, or, or if we figure out something that could work better, or we identify something that's not working great, you know, we'll come back and, and readjust. But this will m bring us in line with the Supreme Court decision, and we believe it will set us up to move forward successfully as a community. Staff agrees, and Planning and Zoning voted seven and zero in favor of the text amendment. And I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. The only questions? Question, yeah, the only question I had was just to for cl just make sure I understand. So this would be sign include signs like the yard signs on private property. So if I put a sign in my front yard, mm -hmm. those would apply to me. As yes, well, whether sir. it's a political sign or you know, I, I love cats, whatever. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what the content is, right? Those, exactly. those would apply to me on my Exactly. Property. And these are some of the circumstances where you know, we're gonna probably have some debates as regards to what the definition of an activity or event, you know. Uh, for instance, we see the, you know, no hate in Carolina Beach signs and their likeness, and we would argue that is a continually ongoing activity or event in the, I the eyes of, you know, town code enforcement. But, you know, there will be some flexibility, there will be some growing pains, and, and we very well may hear from the town attorney that something is not working and it needs to be changed, but we will deal with it appropriately. Awesome job, Miles. Yeah. So, so the code enforcement officer is the one that actually 
enforces this? Predominantly, I mean, Jeremy, myself, and Gloria, the zoning officials, as well as the building inspector, and even sometimes our police department will get involved, but it really predominantly falls upon code enforcement because most of the complaints we get are either direct, you know, nuisance complaints in regards to a sign, you know, if someone has profanity written and advertised on their property or something of that nature and right. we will investigate. Or more often than not, it is temporary advertisement or real estate signs mm -hmm. which are placed in the right of way <laughs> as opposed to on someone's property, which is not legal. You, if you want to advertise that you just did their roof or a property's for sale, it needs to be on the property, not just on the side of the road. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Need a motion. Can I get a motion? Make a motion to amend Chapter 40, Article 8, Sign Regulations as presented. Motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Three? Yep. Uh, all, all the way at the bottom of the yep. council where oh, oh, man, I jumped in too soon. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> I just had you excited, that's all. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the, the statement of approval, start back over, is it okay? You can keep going. Okay. A statement of approval. The council where I was in accordance with the provisions of the NCGS 168-383 does hereby find and determine that there be adoption of a text amendment to amend Chapter 40, Article 8, to update the sign ordinance to comply with the 2015 Supreme Court decision is consistent with the goals and objectives of the adopted land use plan and other long-range plans. If applicable, list any <laughs> recommended restrictions or requirements. And there should be none. <laughs> yeah. Motion on the floor, all in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Pleasure to right see on. you all this evening. Thanks, right. Miles. Thank you, Miles. All right, uh, committee appointments. So. Oh, I'm sorry, do I, I need to make a motion to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. 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 Committee appointments. Lynn? Uh, the committee appointments for this time were for the Centennial Committee. And if you guys remember when we discussed this, we wanted to be as inclusive as possible. So we ended up with uh, a committee of 11 with uh, two moving over. So there were nine open slots. And upon my review of the list of people who applied, I think it's a good cross-sectional representation of the community. So what I wanted to do was make a motion that we <coughs> uh, just expand that committee to 13 and take all 13. I think that will achieve the initial goal that we had of inclusivity. Yep. Gentlemen, do you have a I'm problem with that? I'm in favor of that. That's fine. I'm fine with that. We'll make a motion. A Kim, is that okay? Okay. Go ahead. So I'd make a motion to, uh, to expand the Centennial Committee to 13, I think, is the total number, and uh, to appoint all noted applicants. Okay. Motion on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Non-agenda items. Does anyone have non-agenda items? I have a couple. Uh, when's our next retreat for the budget? What was that date? I believe it's April 27th. Yeah. yeah so was that a Monday? Tuesday. Tuesday. Is it not? April 27th. I just had one. It kind of was uh, an idea to propose. So it's this is an election year, which means there's a possibility that three seats are going to be gone. Uh, I've been reminded of that by a couple of residents lately. Uh, <laughs> uh, but more importantly, when you begin your first month on council, there's a lot of stuff that you don't know. Uh, and residents don't understand this. Or not that they don't understand this, they just haven't been in that position yet to see what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so <laughs> your first two weeks, you sit down with the town attorney, the town manager, and they give you this two-hour spiel on <laughs> what you need to know, remember, <laughs> for the next four <laughs> years. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, and then they say, and really quick, you're on a couple of committees. Here's this meeting. We'll see you, like, next Tuesday. <laughs> That's the point where and you go, what have I done? So, uh, no, it's, it's, it's like, heck, yeah, this is going to rock because that's the kind of guy I am. Uh, but as a new council member who isn't seasoned, there's things that you don't know to ask. There's things about our community, uh, not just the history of the fishermen and everything here, but the town stuff that you don't know to ask or you might not find out for maybe a year or so being into that position. Uh, so when I first got on, I asked him, I think that the, one of the first things we need to do is we need to create some sort of a, uh, a packet or a welcome 
thing that starts off that shows you uh, the, maybe the two budgets for the previous two years? Uh, what are some of the additions from planning and zoning that have happened for the past 12 months? What have been some of the biggest events from our first responders? There's a lot, uh, there's a lot of th and what things legality are we in or have been in the past few years? Uh, because when you jump on, it's so hard to have that understanding when you go into a council meeting and you don't see, oh, they're talking about this. What is, what does ROT mean? I don't know what ROT means, you know, or, or any of those those notions. I think that we should start now because this December there is a chance that there will be three people who could be brand new, who need to have some sort of a in that office some sort of something that we need to create because we should have a spot where. They feel comfortable to go in, sit down, have everything right there at their hand, whether it's with another council member or individually. And I would like to, because it is it is mind-blowing mm -hmm. what you don't know about this town until eight months later they say, by the way, we, we're doing this. Like, oh, man, I, I've never even heard this. I've been here eight years. Uh, that it's a good starting point because what happens is, in my eye, is that in order for council to truly take care of our community, because that's ultimately what we do, it's your money, and we're just kind of small representation of what's going on as well as our workers. In order for that to be successful, we have to grow together because the only way our town does is through progression. And if you get two new people on that unfortunately don't know any of some of the inside of that history, it's not as easy because then the others have that power, that knowledge of, oh, it's this, but it should be we're sharing this and having that information tangible is the, the key piece. Very good. Uh, good, Anna. I thought we broke them in pretty good, though. Yeah, it's, it's been a good like yeah. year and a half. Yeah, uh, yeah that first meeting was, was the amazing. Nine hour council yeah. meeting. Is <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, so, well, that was yeah, so that's number one. Number two <laughs> is that this has been such a highlighted meeting for me because it's just been so fun. The, the Girl Scouts. I mean it. Get that video. Send it to them. That's something that, <laughs> that, <was laughs> that awesome. the Girl Scouts should see. It's it amazing. Really it's, it made me smile really big. I hope they show their kids uh, <laughs> someday. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to our first responders, Chief. Tell the boys, Chief Ward. Tell the boys, uh, and the girls. Yeah, and the, tell everybody that we appreciate all that they do for the community, mm -hmm. and <laughs> keep rocking, guys. It's gonna be a crazy summer. Gentlemen, I'm I'm good. I got my my licks in. On the, the only. <laughs> The only thing, well, first of all, I, I, you know, you can't you can't thank the first responders enough, right? I mean, I mean, it was just amazing that whole thing. Uh, if there's anything that good that comes out of a tragedy like that, is is you see what we have working for us. Number one, and then the community coming together to me is just it's just amazing. That's number one. Um, on an so a completely different note, and I'm sure it's on a maintenance schedule, uh, but our water tower is looking a little shabby. It needs to be cleaned. <laughs> Are you volunteering, Dan? No, I'm not <laughs> volunteering. But I will agree, agree with Joe Dan on, on getting some type of uh, Council 101 book together because it is you do learn a lot. It's an abundance. Trial by fire, you know, without a doubt. So... Um, I think I think that's a good point, Joe Dan. Uh, and that's all. I does say. that mean you take back all those things you said about the sitting council? I well, <laughs> I, I I tell you what, I have total respect <laughs> for our I'm past councils a hard time and today. such. I mean, total respect. Well, you, you, you know, it's funny because whether you were in opposition to each other before, once you get up here, you're you're playing on the same team because you better have each other's back. <laughs> There's no doubt. So uh, it, so and and I I I like you and um, Lynn pick. Um, defending the pack it in pack it out so that's it's not that's easy great. right now absolutely. i know it's not that's why i'm glad you're doing it yeah absolutely um but uh so anyway yes it's been a very emotional week for everybody on council and staff and um, our citizens and we always pull through we're a tough community so um and we will continue to do that chief again thank you and um, we certainly don't want to slight our police department they were right there right along beside you and cause, like you said we sat in that trailer and they were right there with us so um very good job and bruce you too um i only have one question where are we at with st joseph street did we get that uh, you knew i was going to ask you that so did we get that um guys you saw my email that we have we still are on the table with dot for the st joseph street uh bike lanes so all we have to do is apply yeah and it's i was working with um 
Ben Meister, our project manager, was putting all this information in the other day at some cost numbers we were asking about. So he was submitting it all to the MPO to, and, and NCDOT to get started. Very good. So we'll Very hopefully good. have some Okay. Response. Anything else? Well, then, uh, if not, I will make a motion that we go into closed session to uh, to discuss attorney-client matter in accordance with NCGS 143-318.11A3. Matters being discussed are 18 CVS 3151 Town of Carolina Beach versus Carolina Freeman LLC, 18 CVS 3152 Town of Carolina Beach versus BNF Enterprises LLC, 18 CVS 3153 Town of Carolina Beach versus DRDK LLC, 18 CVS 3154 Town of Carolina Beach versus Freeman Freeman Beach LLC, 18 CVS 3155 Town of Carolina Beach versus Winnie Futch Ayers. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm gonna have that memorized before we. Yeah, it's a. Uh, <laughs> Well, Brandy, we are glad to have you, and uh, I hope we've been uh, entertaining tonight and informative for you.